Hello everyone, and welcome to my Bachelor Nation 24 channel, I hope. Everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Gold Rush, Kevin Beats forgets what made his dad successful. This season of Gold Rush has brought a new level of controversy to the mining operations. While last season saw a lot of inexperienced miners struggling, this season, it is the most experienced who has seen problems arise. Tony Beats, normally the most solid miner on the show, is seeing family problems bring his production to a halt, and many fans are blaming Kevin Beats. Here is what Kevin Beats is doing now on Gold Rush and why it is causing problems. Kevin Beats returns to Gold Rush, but he is not happy. When the new season of Gold Rush began on Discovery Channel, Tony Beats was ready to get his operations started. However, Kevin Beats had not shown up for work yet. Tony seemed surprised when he finally contacted his son and Kevin said he was staying home this season. Tony put his daughter Monica in charge of Kevin's old position and moved on, but he was not happy with his son. The problem is that Monica didn't connect well with Tony Beats in her new position. Tony is making less than he has in a long time, and Parker Schnibble is distancing himself from Tony when it comes to the total gold mine. Parker even refused to come in and help Tony. When Monica had a breakdown after Tony lost his temper when she wasn't doing exactly what he wanted, things got even worse. Then the word came that Kevin Beats was coming back. Fans hoped he could help Tony straighten things out. However, the way Kevin no-showed at the start of the season caused a dent in their relationship. With Tony making Monica not want to be in charge anymore, Kevin returned but then left just as quickly when he realized his dad was still running things with an iron fist. Fans feel Kevin Beats not respecting his dad. There are two lines of thinking ever since Kevin Beats showed back up and then left again. One group of fans feels that Tony Beats has promised his kids he would soon turn things over to them, but he can't let them do things the way they feel is the best. The other group feels that Tony became rich because of how he runs his business, and Kevin ignores that fact. Last July, Kevin posted a photo of all the Volvos on site. This was before he decided to duck out on this season. Now that he has returned and left again, Fans are moving on to that old post to bash Kevin for turning on his family's business. There's a lot of complaints from Kevin, and I think he's forgetting where dinner and money comes from. It's a shame he acts like this is an easy game his family is playing. At the end of the day, Tony is the only one who costs enough balls to run that business. To leave the family business hanging was the worst thing from the eldest son to do. Gold Rush airs every Friday on Discovery at 8 slash 7C. In the high-stakes world of gold mining, the Beats family has etched its name in history. Thanks to the relentless determination and cunning strategy of patriarch Tony Beats. Known as the King of the Klondike, Tony built his empire through hard work, experience, and an uncanny ability to sniff out the best opportunities. However, in recent years, a new dynamic has emerged within the Beats family operation. Kevin Beats, Tony's son, has taken on a more significant role, and with it comes the weight of expectations and the shadow of his father's legendary success. But in the quest to carve out his own legacy, has Kevin forgotten the very principles that made his dad so successful? Tony Beats' journey to the top was anything but smooth. Born in the Netherlands, he immigrated to Canada with a dream and a work ethic that would become the cornerstone of his success. Tony's approach to mining was a blend of old-school grit and modern innovation. He understood that the land held secrets that could only be unlocked with perseverance and a bit of luck. Tony's success was built on a foundation of strategic risk-taking, thorough planning, and an unyielding commitment to quality over quantity. Kevin Beats, having grown up in the shadow of his father's formidable reputation, learned the ropes of the mining business from an early age. He inherited Tony's toughness 
an ambition but seemed to have developed a different perspective on how to run a mining operation. Kevin is tech savvy and often advocates for more contemporary methods and technologies, believing that the future of mining lies in innovation and efficiency. However, this forward-thinking approach has, at times, led him to overlook the fundamental lessons that Tony imparted. One of Tony's key philosophies was the importance of understanding the land. He spent countless hours studying the terrain, analyzing geological reports, and speaking with local experts. Tony's intimate knowledge of the land allowed him to make informed decisions about where to dig, how deep to go, and when to push forward or pull back. Kevin, on the other hand, tends to rely more heavily on technology and data analytics. While these tools are invaluable, they cannot replace the nuanced understanding that comes from hands-on experience and intuition. Another pillar of Tony's success was his emphasis on team cohesion and morale. Tony knew that a motivated and well-coordinated team could achieve remarkable results. He fostered a sense of camaraderie and loyalty among his crew, often leading by example and not shying away from the dirtiest jobs. Kevin, in his bid to modernize operations, sometimes forgets that the human element is just as critical as the mechanical and technological aspects. His more rigid and sometimes detached management style can lead to friction within the team, undermining the unity that Tony worked so hard to build. Risk management is another area where Kevin's approach diverges from his father's. Tony was a master at calculating risks and was not afraid to make bold moves when he believed the potential reward justified it. He balanced this daring with a cautious optimism, always having contingency plans in place. Kevin, driven by a desire to prove himself and perhaps outdo his father, has occasionally taken risks that Tony would have deemed unnecessary or too high stake. This brashness, while occasionally paying off, also has led to setbacks that could have been avoided with a more measured approach. Tony's success was also rooted in his respect for the history and traditions of gold mining. He valued the lessons learned from past miners and often incorporated time-tested methods into his operations. Kevin, focused on innovation, sometimes dismisses these traditional practices in favor of newer, untested methods. While progress is essential, completely disregarding the wisdom of those who came before can lead to repeating past mistakes. Moreover, Tony's relationship with the land was almost spiritual. He treated it with a reverence that recognized both its potential and its limits. Kevin's more mechanistic view sees the land as a resource to be optimized, sometimes pushing beyond what is sustainable or prudent. This difference in perspective can lead to environmental and operational challenges that Tony's more respectful approach managed to avoid. Despite these differences, Kevin is not without his own merits. His technical expertise and forward-thinking mindset have introduced efficiencies and innovations that have undoubtedly benefited the Peaks operation. However, the challenge lies in finding a balance by integrating his father's foundational principles with modern techniques, Kevin could potentially surpass Tony's achievements. The key is not to forget what made Tony successful, but to build upon it.